Hey guys, welcome back. Automotive Inquires here. We are back today with a request on how to do Homelink. Uh, Homelink is basically a universal garage door opener that your car could come equipped with. Sometimes they're on the mirror bottoms, the mirror front. The visor here, and I think that's about where I've seen them. Oh, sorry. And on my Ram, I had them up here. So they're usually going to be like... Uh, basically identified by having these little dots on here. So if you don't know if your car is equipped with it, but you have a random set of buttons that look just like that, then you most likely have Homelink. Now, does Homelink work with 90% of garage door openers? Yep, absolutely. Even ones that are substantially older. Uh, the biggest thing is about rolling code um, garage door openers that are fairly new, uh, or I guess newer than the old ones. If you just have a standard like old screw drive one, that'll still work on here and the process will still be the same. Um, you just won't necessarily see the blinking lights. All right, <clears throat> now what you're gonna need for this process is a small step ladder so you can reach the uh, buttons on your actual garage door openers. Um, and then you're gonna need probably about 10 minutes of time. Now, again, this process will work. I have Genie garage door openers. This will work for Chamberlain and LiftMaster and so on and so forth, okay? One thing that will be different is your learn button and the location of that learn button on your actual garage door opener. So, if you have a garage door opener and it still has the original box or shrouding on it, it should tell you the model number and you can do it. If you are lucky enough to have the uh, owner's manual, you can go to the back of it, but sometimes it's a little bit more complicated than it really needs to be. Because actually programming the garage door opener is actually super easy. And once you get the process done, it's actually easier than training the garage keypad that sells uh, comes with your actual garage door opener. All right, so for this instance, you're going to need to make sure the accessory or switch is on. Now, if you're in your garage and you decide to start it, which is fine, um, make sure your garage door opener. We don't want anybody getting sick or passing out. Now, I'm not going to start. I'm just going to leave it in this mode. Now... Most of these universal garage door openers, people will say, well, I don't want to use that because that means somebody can break in and use that to open my garage door. Well, you're already going to have your other garage door hanging on the visor. So this is a little bit more discreet. In addition to that, a lot of these don't work with the ignition at all off. So that'll get you covered. So now for this, we got our uh, Genie garage door opener um, right here. And so what I like to do is, is because I have a rolling code one, if you hold these buttons too long on, on any remote, sometimes they'll switch to a different mode and that'll den be denoted by like that green light right there that just popped up. That'll actually um, turn red and then that'll change the actual signal. So we're going to hold it and then let go and hold it and let go. Before we get that done though, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the garage door opener is clear of its codes. So you're going to push up on the two outer buttons. So you see one, two, and three. If you don't have three garage door openers, you don't have to use all three. If you just want to program one, you can do one. I'd use one as your favorite door or the biggest one and then go on down. Me, I always skip the second one because I only have two garage doors. So that way if you bump the one or something, you're not going to open the other door at the same time. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to push up. You're going to see that little light up button and it's orange. When it starts flashing really fast green, that means the garage codes are clear. Now, if you're trading in your vehicle or selling it, you probably should clear your codes, all right? So that way somebody else can't come back later. Or if you trade it in, uh, they can't come back. So it's bright uh, green right there. We can let go. Now we're ready to program those buttons. But as I was saying, if you trade your vehicle in and somebody was to somehow find a registration in there and they're not the, the uh, you know nicest of people and they want to take advantage of people, they may come in. So just clear those out before you trade in your car, but that's how you're going to do it. Once you do that, you are good to go, all right? So now what we're going to do is is we're going to get this garage door opener pretty darn close, okay? Again, I'm doing button one for my big garage door, and then we're going to do this button. And what's going to happen is, as you're training it, you can see that flashing orange. So I hold my, my garage door button open for about three, four seconds of thing. Once it starts flashing rapidly, you're done, okay? It's found the signal, and it's done. Now we're going to go out and do the outside door, the actual garage door. All right, this is where you're gonna to need to know what buttons are your learn button. And then there's always gonna be a little LED light here that kind of lets you know what the mode is. Again, these buttons basically don't usually do anything after you're, you're done setting up your garage door. Those are for max down and max up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna push and hold that. It's gonna illuminate that LED. And then one's gonna go off, it's gonna blink. Now you have about a minute or less to get the rest of this process done. So we need to get back in the car. Now we're back in the car, we're gonna push and hold this button. And we're gonna keep holding it for about eight, nine seconds until you see, well, the garage door 
go back up or down. So we look right here, it's done. Your LEDs are off your train, all right? Now, we're gonna rinse and repeat that same process for a second door, all right? So in this instance, for this garage remote, it's the second button, but I'm gonna do the third button, okay? So I'm gonna push and hold this. At the same time, I'm gonna push this. Now, sometimes your garage door are gonna pick up the signal slower, sometimes faster. This process could take up to probably 30 or 40 seconds, okay? All right, now that guy's trained right there. So now let's go over to the second door. All right, so for genies, they're all pretty much the same, but this one actually says set and program, the other one does not. Um, it's a little bit newer model, so now we're gonna push and hold this. LEDs come on again. Once they start flashing, we got about a minute to finish the rest of the process. All right, so back in the car, we're gonna push and hold this outside button. And it's blinking slow because it's trying to train itself to the actual thing. You're gonna push it. And then you're gonna keep pushing it. And eventually, it's gonna reach over and find that door. And there she goes. After that, again, you're all done with your home link setup. And now be the same if it's here, 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 everywhere like that. And basically no matter the age or the manufacturer of your garage door opener. Just remember once you get done to shut off your ignition power and you can then remove your original garage door opener and put it back somewhere else so you have a spare. If for some reason uh, you have issues and it doesn't seem to be reading to the remote when you get further down the street, it could be because you're hanging something onto the mirror. So just be aware of that. Thanks a lot, guys. Hit that uh, notification bell, that subscribe bell, and that like, and do me a favor. Come back and watch the next one.